What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an absolutely amazing Android tablet known as the Samsung Galaxy Tab SA Ultra. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love these Android tablets and this is definitely the most powerful one that I've been able to test on the channel. And when I pre-ordered this from Samsung's website, they did throw in the keyboard cover case. We'll also be taking a look at this. But really what makes this the most ridiculous Android tablet on the market right now is the powerful CPU and the massive screen. This is coming in at 14.6 inches. It's a 120 hertz Super AMOLED display and it's absolutely beautiful. But as you can see, I mean, this thing is massive. In my opinion, it is a bit too big to be a carry around tablet, but they also offer the Tab S8 and the Tab S8 Plus. The regular Tab S8 has an 11 inch screen and the Plus has a 12.4 inch screen, but they both pack the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU. Along with these tablets, Samsung does include an S Pen, which comes in handy for a lot of people, but personally, I'm not an artist or a graphic designer, so I really don't use it that much. Uh, there are other videos on YouTube of artists using this tablet. I'll try to find one and leave a link in the description so you can see how well it works. And the only other thing in the box here, besides the user manual, is a USB Type-C cable. They do not include a charger anymore with their tablets, but this does support up to a 45 watt quick charger. So the first thing you're going to notice when you take a look at this tablet is the massive screen and how beautiful it is. Super AMOLED 14.6 inches with a resolution of 1848 by 2960. And real quick, I just wanted to give you a size comparison here. On the left hand side, we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which has a 12.4 inch AMOLED display. On the right hand side, we obviously have the Tab S8 Ultra. With this tablet, the S Pen will magnetically attach to the side or the back of the unit and it's right here underneath the camera. Really easy access to that S Pen if you're gonna use it a lot. So overall, when it comes down to it, as making this video, this is definitely the most powerful Android tablet that's ever hit the market. I'm sure there's gonna be more powerful units in the future, but right now, this is packing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. We've got eight cores with one Prime X2 core running at up to three gigahertz, three A710 cores running at 2.5 gigahertz, and four A510 cores running at 1.8 gigahertz. When it comes to the GPU, it's using the Arduino 730. You can get this in a couple different RAM variants and storage variants from eight gigabytes up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And when it comes to storage, 128 gigabytes up to 512 gigabytes, but all of them do support a micro SD card. It's got quad speakers with Dolby Atmos, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, an 11,000 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt quick charging capabilities. And this is running Android 12 with One UI 4.1 right out of the box. So I've had a couple days to mess around with this tablet and the whole user experience is super smooth. I really expected it to be. It's using Android 12 with Samsung's new One UI 4.1. It's got some great new features built in, and since this tablet does utilize Wi-Fi 6E, I mean, it is very, very snappy to load everything up from cold when you need to get online, via emails, web pages, or even videos. And speaking of video playback, since this is officially from Samsung, we do have Widevine Level 1, which allows us to do HD content from our favorite apps. Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, all the apps that need DRM to work properly in HD will function perfectly fine on this tablet. And real quick, I just wanted to give you a little taste of some 4K video playback. Even though we don't have a 4K screen, we can still take it up to 4K, 60 FPS. I'll also turn Stats for Nerds on. And yeah, it definitely does 4K video really well. We had seven drop frames on the initial load in, but that's about it. This little chip can definitely handle 4K. And the built-in quad speakers with Dolby Atmos activated get incredibly loud, and it actually has a lot of bass for how thin this thing is. And keep in mind, this display does support HDR10+, and if you've got a YouTube video with HDR, it'll automatically activate, or you can go into the advanced settings and turn it on and off from there. It's really up to you. But if you're looking for a huge tablet for media playback, it's really hard to go wrong with something like this. Awesome speakers and an amazing screen. But now I want to move over to some performance benchmarks, and we're going to be facing this off against Samsung's last tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. The S7 Plus is powered by a Snapdragon 865 Plus, and on single core we got a 937 Multi 2822. And as you can see, the new Tab S8 Ultra beat it out in single and multi-core, coming in with a really good multi-core score of 3500. Moving over to a GPU benchmark, we have 3 d Mark Wildlife, and this is where the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 really shines. On the 865+, Plus, 4,156. 
on the new SA Ultra 9515. I mean, we have a massive jump in GPU performance when it comes to this new chip. And the final benchmark I ran was Antutu, 640,845 on the S7 Plus, 947,997 on the new Tab A Ultra. And taking a look down the list, you can see that the CPU and GPU performance is way ahead of that 865 Plus in the Tab S7 Plus. Now it's time to take a look at some native Android game performance. Here we have Call of Duty Mobile, highest settings, highest frame rate, and we're at 60 FPS. Now on lesser CPU gaming phones, I've actually seen this run at 90 FPS, and hopefully they do enable that down the road. But it really comes down to this tablet just coming out. We've got that 120 hertz display, and I'm sure that the CPU would handle it. Next up, we've got Grid Autosport. Now, this is the PC port that's come to Android. Absolutely amazing if you have a device that can support it. It looks really, really good. I've got all the high quality textures enabled. We're at the highest graphics quality, but I can only get this to run at 30. I guess it's locked at 30. I personally can't find a 60 FPS setting in any of the settings. So if you do run this on your device and you know how to get it to 60, let me know in the comments below. And finally, for native Android gaming, we have Genshin Impact. If you've ever tested this out, you know how hard it can be to run. We're at high settings, 60 FPS, and it's running really well. But going up to very high settings, we only get an average of around 47 FPS at very high. That's with everything enabled with that preset. In the future, I do expect this to run much better on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But right now, high 60 is definitely the way to go. Still looks really great and plays fine on this tablet. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and when it comes to emulation on an Android tablet, I haven't seen anything like this. This huge screen looks really great with basically everything that I've tested. Here we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, God of War, Chains of Olympus, 5x resolution, Vulcan back in, running really, really well. Next up, I also wanted to test the Dolphin emulator, and I just went with a Wii game. Here we have Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, 1080p, Vulcan back in, again running at 60fps. This is really great performance for GameCube and Wii when it comes to an Android device. And the final emulator I'm testing, at least in this video, because I will have a full emulation video coming up. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that I want to test, so stay tuned to the channel and let me know what you want to see. But here's PS2 using Ether SX2, Gran Turismo 4, 3x resolution, OpenGL. And on the rally stages, I was actually able to go up to 4x resolution, but on these tracks with longer draw distances, I had to drop it down to 3. And before I wrap this video up, I wanted to take a look at this keyboard case. Like I mentioned, I did a pre-order on the Tab S8 Ultra and it came with it. But basically, this is going to turn it into a 14.6 inch Android laptop. As you can see, we do have a trackpad built in and it works really well. Keys feel nice on this. I mean, I would rather have like a mechanical keyboard, but overall, this is actually a really good experience. Now, when it comes to these Samsung tablets, one of my favorite features that they have built in and the Samsung Galaxy S line of phones is Samsung DeX. And with this here, we actually have a hotkey. We can press function and the DeX button, and it'll bring up Samsung DeX on the built-in screen. And if you're not familiar with Samsung DeX, basically it's an Android desktop environment, and it works really well with a mouse and keyboard. And since we have such a massive screen, I really have no need to connect this to an external monitor, but it is totally possible. I'll show you that in a second. But with DeX, we've got multitasking, multi-windows. We can open up several apps at a time. And you can navigate really easily with a keyboard and trackpad like this, or you could just connect a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard or even a USB mouse and keyboard. And one thing I always like to just make sure of is this does support display over USB Type-C. So I've got a USB Type-C to HDMI hub here. And on one screen, we have Samsung DeX running. We've got the big 32-inch monitor here. Samsung DeX is over there. We've got Android on the tablet screen, and we can use these at the same exact time. Or you could just set it up to mirror the tablet screen to the external display. But keep in mind, since the display on the Tab S8 Ultra is 16 by 10, 
it's not going to fill the full screen on a 16x9 monitor. So overall, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is a monster of a tablet. I mean, we've got plenty of power here, a big, beautiful 14.6 inch screen, and battery life is actually really great. I've been able to run one test so far because it does take so long, but with the screen brightness set to 60% and a 1080p YouTube video plan, I got 10 hours and 14 minutes of battery life out of this thing. I will be doing some more testing, but you know, if you're doing high-end gaming, I would suspect around four to five hours of battery life, something like Genshin Impact at high settings, 60 FPS. That's really how it goes. It's just going to pull a lot more power than a video. But to tell you the truth, if I had to do this over again, I probably just would have went with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 with the 11-inch screen. You can get it with eight gigabytes of RAM and the same CPU, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is gonna give you the same exact performance. And with a lower resolution screen, I mean, you might even be able to benchmark a bit higher than the Ultra model. But if you're looking for an Android tablet with a ridiculously large screen for media playback, emulation, gaming, and just even work, then the Tab S8 Ultra is definitely for you. But if you can live without that giant screen, then I would just go with the Tab S8. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will have a couple more videos coming, so let me know what you want to see running in the comments below, and I'll get that made or put in the next video. If you're interested in learning more about Samsung's new Galaxy Tab S8 line from the S8 Plus, S8 Ultra, and regular S8, I'll leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.